And then after I blast you, I admit it was wrong that I did that. And that I owe you something for doing that to you. Right. Like yeah. a restorative justice kind of concept. Exactly. And I admit freely I did this wrong and you are due compensation. But whatever compensation I'm going to give you, you have to use exactly how I tell you to do it. And you can't use it any other way. We agree on this sum that I owe you for my injury to you, but you have to spend it the way I tell you to spend it. That was the bill they passed for us with the, with the what was, it's called JTAC. The JTAC bill created this $290 million trust fund, but we couldn't touch the principal sum ever. We can't. That's some only, mafia sounding only, stuff there, the man. The only crazy. thing we're allowed to get is the interest, and they're taken from the Western Area Power Association profits. So that if they have a bad year, and we may not get our full installment. I mean, that's how they're paying us back, the just compensation. We were prohibited from a per capita payment. The, the reservation that has two of the ten poorest counties in this country wasn't allowed to give even a small amount of that money, money to its members. Why? Because of their paternalistic attitude towards us. They'll just go drink it. They'll just go blow it. You give each tribal member two thousand dollars. You know it's just going to get wasted. For a family of five, a two thousand dollars per capita is ten thousand dollars. That's money that could have made a heck of a difference in some people's lives. We were prohibited from doing that for our own people. We agreed to this. You know after they destroyed our own land, after they destroyed our agency village. I mean this is this is what we're dealing with. This is what we've been dealing with. You know, that, that, this lake out here is a crime, the habitat destroyed. So and also, when they passed JTAC, they passed the, what's called the mitigation bill. And our own leadership sold us out with that bill. Our own leadership agreed to a middle channel boundary for the river. Now, that wasn't the Ochete Shakoi. That was the IRA tribal government of the Cheyenne River Sioux and the IRA tribal government of the Lower Brule, who agreed to this with, this, with the state through the federal government that they would uh, restore <coughs> habitat along the river. And, and they would give us jurisdiction along our boundary areas, no longer Corps of Engineer land. It would be tribal land. We agreed to this and we accepted a middle channel boundary. It was a sellout and rejected by all the other tribes. It really tore the nation apart when that happened. And it was a man named Greg Borland, who was our chairman, who was the architect of it, agreed to it, sold us out. You know, it's it's, it's a, just a history of abuses, a history of taking advantage, and a history of using our own tribal leadership against our best interests. And right now, after that man, he had three terms, got voted out of office. He is now the agency superintendent for Cheyenne River. They rewarded him richly for agreeing to these acts, for selling us out. And, and, and for selling us out on the greatest crime that was done to us as, as the four bands, domiciled at Cheyenne River, the Minakoju, the Tazip Show, the Siha Sapa, and the Ohin Ba. The, and there's a reason why we're the four bands and that ended up Thank at Cheyenne River. You're welcome. All right. I'll uh, see y'all in a bit. Dok Sha. Uh, Red Cloud got his own agency because he signed the 68 Peace Treaty. And so Pine Ridge has this beautiful, mm -hmm. huge agency that's just for the Kalalas. Uh, um, uh Spotted Tail, with the Shichangu down on Rosebud agreed to peace you know worked for it they got a beautiful rosebud is beautiful eh? you know there's some of the white river there and and other areas are just uh sitting bull a symbol of resistance and deservedly so after he returned from exile in canada was given standing rock for an agency huge agency beautiful papa you know so on those three reservations that are three of the four major lakota reservations in this state one band is domiciled there but on Cheyenne River, you have four. And that is because we were the Northern Lakota. The Lakota had two divisions to them. The Southern Lakota, which was Rosebud and Pine Ridge, the Chichangu and the Oglala. And then you had the Northern Lakota, which was the four bands from Cheyenne River and the Unkpapa. Well, we, uh, we ended up there because we were the last resistors. Crazy Horse didn't run with the Oglalas at the end. He was running with his Ina, his mom's people, the Minakoju. And we resisted. We were the last of the holdouts so that when we finally were forced to surrender, they put all four of us on Cheyenne River. And that's how come there are four Lakota bands at Cheyenne River. Because we were the holdouts. We, we held out to the bitter end. And then, and with that history, you can start understanding why our people from Cheyenne River are here to support Standing Rock. 
because we suffered a grievous injury, injury when this river got flooded, when they created these lakes. You know, they, we look at these lakes and say they're beautiful, but to a lot of people, they're not beautiful. A lot of the older people. You know, we can say, you know, when the elevation goes down, gee, the lake's really down. One time I said that to my uncle and he said, it'll never be low enough for me. You know, and then that, and those are the, those are the wounds mm. from the flooding, you know, that, that, you know, they, oh, wow. they just, you know, that's what it's like. And that's what they did to us. Okay, um, well, to lighten that mood a little bit, um, something you mentioned about the uh, Lakota language, um, what's this about, no curse words? There's no profanity in Lakota. The closest it could even approach is if you said something that I found outrageous, I was like, oh, you know, just whatever, you know, just, it, it, there's, no. Does it have a literal trans translation? Uh, no, oh. it's just like a, like an exclamation of disgust. A sigh, or like, huh. Just, oh. Okay. Like a guttural H with a hard O after it. Oh, God. God, God I'd yeah. be a mute. That's mute Lakota. There was just, we didn't curse. There's no equivalent to it whatsoever. Wow. And like I was explaining to you earlier, Mike, that goes to the, what I feel is, is the real important aspect of speaking Lakota is the respect that's inherent in speaking the language itself. When I address Sherry here, it's Hunkashi almost, you know, and when, when I greet you on Facebook and it's how Hunkashi, automatically a kinship term. Hunkashi is a female cousin for a male. So even though if I was meeting her for the first time uh, and we had no other relationship, I would greet her as a relative with a kinship term, as a, as a matter of respect, as an automatic assumption of the, of the famous phrase, mitaku e oyasi, we are all related. You know, so when you greet a stranger, when I greet you, if I didn't know you, I'd say, how Tahashi, uh, a male cousin. You know, and, and that's how we thought. And, and when we expressed so, ourselves through language, our thinking went into our language. Where you, so you're constantly, I'm just going to take a wild stab in the dark here, see if I understand, you're constantly reaffirming the, uh, the kinship with all humans. Continuously. And, and the way we spoke to one another wow. every day. I mean, that's, that's how, that's how uh, in, important it was for us to maintain those things, you know, to keep those things going. And, and 